Welcome to Living Mosaic. My name is Martha Holden. I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. And today with me is Glenn Hutchison, a friend and an artist. This is the first of our series of special events recorded to talk about the concept of living mosaic, which the idea is that there is a solution to the heartbreak we see in the world that we're so aware, aware of, and that you, we, are a part of that solution. We are unique and essential parts of the solution. And we envision the solution as a living mosaic, living and evolving. And so that's what we're here to talk about. And the, we're gathering of people who find that concept interesting and are interested in becoming, doing, letting go of what they need to let go of, clinging to what they need to cling, in order to be drawn into their niche in the living mosaic. And I think that pretty much is it. And that's what we're doing here. So, and Glenn, if you'd tell us just a little bit about yourself and what interests you or what in, or doesn't interest you in the living mosaic concept thing. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Martha, for inviting me here. Uh, it's a, a, an odd pleasure to have this opportunity. <laughs> and I'm glad just to be able to sit and talk with you about it a little bit and about whatever else, I suppose. Um, about myself, uh, I never know what the most relevant <laughs> aspects are, but I would say uh, I think the way you introduced me, uh, we know each other mm -hmm. and I'm an artist, uh, almost sums it up as it is. I have lived here in Montpelier, where we are, um, for 15 years. Uh, I see lots of people all the time in my day job uh, as a picture framer. Um, I have an art studio where I make my own paintings and sculptures and drawings. Um, and, and I do a lot of reading. Uh, I don't retain much of it, mm -hmm. but I read an awful lot of stuff. Um, what I think about the spark of humanity and the living mosaic concepts, uh, I think I'm, first of all, really, again, thankful to you, not mm -hmm. only for having me here, but also just for the work that you're doing to mm -hmm. um, bring this out. Uh, it is worthwhile and really interesting. I share the sense that there is there are solutions, mm -hmm. um, and I think it makes sense to work toward those solutions in the way that you seem to be working with conversations and mm -hmm. writings and listenings, um, among all the other things, but those aspects. Uh, and I think that um, I appreciate the, the root idea of the spark of humanity that's in yeah. each of us. Um, I think that that's perhaps not exactly the way I would phrase it, but I, I recognize that idea. Um, then I get to the living mosaic, and I have to admit I am... I am um, I am in a state of questioning that mm -hmm. concept, I think. Or, or maybe just the, the, the metaphor, the specificity of the metaphor. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to this conversation to, uh, in, in some part, to, to work through some of those questions. Mm. Good. Thank you very much. That's great. It's good. I think before we move into that, which sounds very meaty and interesting, and I can <laughs> hardly wait. Or, or lame. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Yeah. Um, we'll enjoy it no matter what. Yes. Either way, yes, I think, I think that's, that's the important thing. 
I'm delighted you're here and bringing some caring, you know, some intelligence and some mental, some, yeah, you're present. You're paying attention to it and responding, which is a wonderful thing. Because you as an artist know that, you know, when you put your art on the wall, you like to have people not only look at it, but have the feeling that they're responding in some way. Yeah. And this is, you know, it's a different art form. Yeah. Um, so do you have, do you associate with any particular faith tradition or background or spiritual upbringing or any of that stuff that you'd like to put on the table? Yeah, it's probably worthwhile. I, um, I would say that I am an atheist with Quaker and Buddhist leanings or, or, um, curiosity, mm. um, I feel as though I think about religion and spirituality and philosophy fairly regularly, and I go back and forth about it. Um, but I have not ever been directly connected to a faith tradition. Let's say. Even as a child, your parents didn't march you off to Sunday school. No, no I, I would say okay. the opposite. Uh, okay. <laughs> I knew where the Sunday school was. I had piano lessons in the mm. same building. But um, we, the the family, generally. Um, avoided committing to any religion and uh, had, a, a, I think, a, a quietly antagonistic relationship to mm. the idea of religion um, and, and maybe um, more specifically uh, the, what was the standard, mm. what were the standard religious options around us, basically right. Protestant. Christianity. Yeah. So I grew up. Um, I grew up thinking uh, there were all kinds of wonderful stories mm -hmm, uh, mm. in the Bible and elsewhere, mm -hmm. um, and that none of them had any more truth or validity to them than any other mm -hmm. options, um, and that the institutions of religion were. <laughs> let's say, questionable at best. Mm. Um, and then uh, in college, I went to Haverford College, oh. um, which is a Quaker yeah. begun institution mm -hmm. and, and still has a fair amount of um, the, the leanings toward uh, mm -hmm. Quakerism there. And really appreciated that angle on Christianity, I think, and on religion. Um, and attended some meetings for worship, and, and mostly just fell asleep, which was it was a very nice nap. <laughs> uh, and then also in college, uh, studied Buddhism, mm -hmm. especially toward Zen, uh, and since then have again once in a while attended a, a, a Quaker meeting or. Uh, attempted zazen or something like that. Mm. I don't have a regular practice though, mm -hmm. and I and I don't usually miss it. Um, I do appreciate the community more now, mm. I think, yeah. than I did when I was growing up, yeah. and I think that if I if I had a little bit more of a spur to uh, do anything different than what I'm, the, the nothing that I'm doing. <laughs> I, 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 I think that my objections to organized religion have decreased over time. Right. Yeah, it sounds, but you mentioned antagonism is, yeah. in your upbringing, it sounds Gentle like that. Gentle antagonism. That, that, <laughs> but that that's, that's drained away, or yeah. that's not so fierce. Yeah. For yeah. Whatever, yeah. yeah. It's always gentle, yeah. So yeah. there it is, yeah. So good. So you said you had some questions and comments and critique and whatever about the living mosaic concept. Yeah. Whatever. Have had it. Okay. So I think that the... Please. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Again, thank you very much. This Please, is great. thank you. Um, I think that the basic question for me is whether... Is, is why... 
this specific metaphor of a mosaic and whether the modifying word living mm. um, easily applies to the metaphor. Uh, to me, thinking about um, thinking about a mosaic, the qualities that I see in that uh, imaginary mm. object are immutability mm. and a, a kind of fragmentation of individual mm. pieces mm. Mm. Um, and a sense of being made mm -hmm. um, by an outside mm, mm, mm. Uh oh <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> by an outside maker mm -hmm. um, and while I appreciate the the sense of let's say uh, peace and stability and beauty and mm -hmm togetherness, mm -hmm. unity, mm -hmm. um, that the image offers, I, I struggle to get my sense of the way things really are, mm. as inaccurate and, and changing as that sense is. Mm -hmm. um, I struggle to, to match that sense with my concept of a mosaic. Mm. And then, well, it's a living mosaic. That that word perhaps helps, but mm -hmm. but but um, I've never seen a living mosaic. And I'm not sure that that once I apply that that idea of of life to a mosaic, I'm not sure that it still is a mosaic in my head. It might be something mm. else. Um, so I should try to phrase this as a question so that it's no, not just No, you don't a, need to. I can okay. carry on anyway. Please. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, and I don't know where it came from. You know about ideas, they just come. Yes. So I, they take no responsibility. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but okay. I will do my best to rationalize. I'll, yeah. Um, um, I think mosaic, because, because mosaics are made of such different pieces, and each one can be may be unique and I like that part of it that that even though we're each unique that we each fit into this functional this living organism this and that that we don't need to be in fact it's destructive if we want to be you know I'm a pebble let's say you're what do you want to be uh Oh, a pebble sounds good. I'll be a piece of... Um... Mirror? Sure, Plus? I'll be a mirror. Okay, yeah. you'll be a mirror, I'll be a pebble. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, so, you know, so I look at it, oh, he says so good. <laughs> I want to be a mirror too. Oh, why yeah. am I just a pebble? You know, it's that sort of thing, uh, or pebbles are better, Pe pebbles can break mirrors, haha. <laughs> you know, if you sling them, right. you know, there's all that stuff that that the variety and the being, knowing that when we are who we are, I'm not trying to be a mirror, you're not trying to be a pebble, and allow ourselves to become truly the pebble we are, the mirror we are, the more we do that, the more willing we are to let go of our illusions of who we should be, and what the other person should be, or don't we want to, or shouldn't they, then we're more, then we can begin to fit into some functioning organism. And yeah, the, I know mosaics, they, pe people build them. I have a friend who does that. Yeah. And she liked the image because, oh, we're all broken. Yeah. And there has that advantage, but you know, my pebble isn't broken, to be honest with you. <laughs> at least not at this moment. But that, you know, the idea that, that it's not, it's an organism. Hmm. You know, like a squirrel. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like somebody's thinking, hmm, that piece of 
shell needs to, you know, it's not, yeah. it doesn't have that, at least for me. Yeah. One reason I think it works for me is because all, I believe, no, I don't believe much of anything, but I, I'm becoming, I'm increasingly experiencing the oneness of all creation. And so I'm into mycorrhizal networks yep. and non-human allies yep. from who knows where. And that we're all part of this dance, an ever-evolving multidimensional dance, yeah. which is very abstract. Is that easier than a mosaic? Uh, um, I, I think... Uh, I'm closer to a maker of mosaics than I am to a dancer. <laughs> uh, um, but I think that a, a dance mm. uh, feels um, more true to my sense of yeah. what's going on than, right. than, than a, a mosaic does, as a metaphor. Right, yeah, yeah, I can see that. A, di a dancing mosaic? Yeah, yeah, yes, sure. <laughs> Where we get to be ourselves and evolving too. Yeah. Because it's alive, it's evolving. It yeah. has to, you know, we yeah. have to be evolving whether we like it or not. Yeah. And so an evolving, dancing, evolving, an evolving dancing mosaic. Yeah. I'm, it doesn't have to be in a mosaic, really. If, you know, if we get it that we each get to be who we are. Yes. And that who we really are is essential, it's important. Yes, I want to come back to that. Okay. Um, because I may have another um, uh, question about who we are okay. and so on. But I, I also want to come back to what you said, a couple of things. Uh, but earlier you were talking about mycorrhizal networks, mm -hmm. if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't and, know. And your, yeah, me neither. <laughs> and, and your sense of um, interconnection and, and mm. oneness of being. Mm. Um, and I would be curious to hear your thoughts about that sense of oneness of being in mycorrhizal networks and, and the, the rest of the world besides you and me and, and humans. Uh, is it your sense that um, it, that actual pebbles mm -hmm. and mushrooms mm -hmm. and other identifiable things mm -hmm. and entities also have that spark? It's called the spark of humanity. This network, but yeah, right, and we're we're spark can be a you know I'm I'm. Trying to rewrite a new thing. Oh, interesting! I'm glad I can in, help. <laughs> in 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 um, respect, out of respect for those um, entities or creatures, my fellow creatures, that have no inclination to have anything to do with anything that is human or you know, con you know, yep. spark of humanity. Mm, don't want that. Yep. So I'm I'm working on another thing about a, a germ of true, mm. and germ is in germinate, not as in pathogen so much. Um, so that's the language I'm using at this point. Mm. Doing that, you know, it's the spark of humanity network is the living mosaic program. Whatever we're doing here is a project of the Spark of Humanity Network, but that's, you know, you can buy one without buying the other. Yeah. Or neither. Yep. Yeah. That answers. Yeah. The other thing that I uh, appreciated about uh, what you were saying earlier was, was um, your response that the idea came and, and uh, that you weren't sure from where necessarily and that um, and then you said something like, uh, let's see how I might rationalize it, which I really like. Uh, I, I think that um, one of the things that I have enjoyed, one of the ideas that I've enjoyed coming to, maybe, mm. or, or poking at, 
mm. maybe more more accurately. I'm not sure I've come to it. Is is that uh, is how irrational I am, or irrational? Sure. Yeah, but that that my sense is that. Um, the way my rationality behaves mm -hmm. is to make sense of what I have just observed myself do. Right. Um, right. And the the doing the 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 thing that I find the place where I find myself mm -hmm. is rarely, if ever, the result of a rational process. Or logical, logical process, right? For, for not me. linear, not logical, right? That 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 there is more to me, mm. um, more underneath my conscious speaking, rationalizing, logical, uh, consecutive, mm. controlled mind. That that most of that more is doing most of the actions that I then notice myself having just done. And then I think, well, I did that because such and such and such and such led to it. And therefore, that's what I did. OK. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and so I think that whenever I see um, an example uh, of someone else perhaps having a similar mm. um, perception, I, I, I it tickles me, and I appreciate it. So, yeah. it's a, so do you, how, how urgent or how important do you feel it is to be able to come up with a reason why you do these things? I think that it's valuable um, and helps all of me, both the mm -hmm. logical, rational, and the everything else. Mm -hmm. um, do the next things. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah, OK. Yeah. I remember having something like this conversation with, with uh, our honorable mayor, Jack McCullough, mm. a few years back, which was amusing. We didn't get very far into it, but uh, I would be curious to see if you can get him on this program. And, and see I don't know him. <laughs> oh, he's very sweet. He, he would be, uh, well, we'll see. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just sort of feel there's something alive when you were motioning. It felt like, okay, there's this rational, logical, more or less linear, and then there's this where the real life is. Yes. That comes up, and and you blessings on you. You know, you respond to it. You you listen to it. You you were obedient to it in a sense. Yeah. And you let it take you, and that's part of being an artist. I would say. I should hope. In in my practice, it's uh, it is my it is my practice as yeah. as much as I can figure it out. Um, yes, yeah. very much. And then try to f <laughs> does this make sense in this way? And I suppose projecting wildly, which I do, do um, that when I figured out, you know, this is why I did this, yeah. and then that gives the rational, logical part of my brain, just over here, I think, as I re remember correctly, um, that gives me permission. Then that part will give me permission to then respond to the living, intuitive yes. whoo, part again. It says, OK, that was OK. You did OK. I don't know why you did it. But OK, it's, it's OK. You can, you can keep on being. I don't have to put the lid on you. Yeah, I think uh, perhaps what I'm trying to do mm -hmm. in art and, and life uh, is um, allow myself to uh, to do things and make things that will elicit laughter or applause from my rational conscious oh, good. speaking mind. I like it. We've um, got twenty one seconds left. What? No. <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. Oh gosh. But you can come back sometime. <laughs> I didn't even get to all of my other problems with your <laughs> concepts. <laughs> well, then we need to set up another time. Okay, that was much faster than I thought. So did I. Me too. It was, was that's because it was fun. Yeah.
It was fun. Yeah, it's good. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much here at ORCA.